Hello out there and welcome to English Teacher Reviews. Today we are going to examine Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Now I've been a fan of Assassin's Creed for a long time. I loved Assassin's Creed 1. Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations are all fine examples of character progression and actual aging in a character. The cinematic trailer for Revelations is still one of my favorite gameplay trailers ever. Assassin's Creed 4, the pirate one, showed what great ship-to-ship -ship combat could look like in a AAA game. I can 100% say that I am both familiar with and a huge fan of the franchise. Now I stopped pre-ordering the games as Unity came out, which was obviously a good move, as that game had so many issues at launch, it may have killed my love for the franchise forever. I'd never given much thought to the Chronicles games, until they came out in a humble bundle. Ubisoft has this weird habit of releasing side games without much fanfare. Look at Freedom's Cry, or Liberation, or any of these three Chronicles games. Now, first thing I want to say is this is definitely an Assassin's Creed game. From the parkour, which often feels pretty good, to the actual melee combat, the game is very much in the style for the series. I used an Xbox controller and everything was intuitive and flowed fairly well. The game runs into the same problem, however, that its 3D pre predecessors struggle with. Sometimes the character doesn't do what you want. Missed jumps, going under a balcony instead of on top of it, or dropping off when you wanted to jump up are still here and as frustrating as ever. When you jump from ledge to ledge, if you're too high to just grab onto the edge, but not high enough to clear it, Xiao Zhan the protagonist will stumble, then grab on. Now that isn't game breaking, but it does break the flow of the game. The game is broken down into 12 sequences which any fan of the IP will be used to. The 12 sequences are further broken down into little areas filled with guards. These also serve as your auto save points. Now after each little area, the game provides you with a style and grade, as well as points. Styles are Shadow, Assassin, and Brawler, while the grades come in gold, silver, or bronze. Shadow gains you the most points and involves the most restarting and patience. Shadow is basically not killing anyone, extra, not being seen, and basically not existing in the NPC's uh, view of the game. This is the best way to play and the way the designers clearly intended it to be played. I spent the first five or six sequences restarting to get Shadow Golds, but eventually got tired of redoing the same stages over and over. It is good to know how well you have done, but I often find that it makes even the good parts of a game feel unsatisfying. Seeing a bronze brawler come up because I decided to chop my way through all the bad guys just, yeah, wasn't very fun. Xiao Jun has a lot of abilities that include melee combat and assassinations, and if you do the Shadow way, you never get to enjoy those mechanics. Uh, I also do not have the patience to earn the shadow on every level, I'm gonna be honest, uh, I just don't. Once again, we have synchronization points that allow you to unlock the various parts of the map, and I found these to be entirely useless. The game is 2.5D, which means that you can only move left to right, but contextually you can move back and forward. This meant that the maps were confusing to use and basically served as a guide on whether to go left or right. I skipped a lot of the secondary objectives because they required a lot of side tracking and use of the map, which, as I mentioned, was not useful. Now where the game really shines is in the chase sequences, which have a pitfall feel to them and can be quite harrowing. I found my blood pumping and heart beating faster as the ruins of a castle or city crumbled around me, and I was forced to run through it all. Sliding, jumping, climbing, and assassinating are all on the table for these sequences, and are the only real place where I felt a sense of satisfaction from completing it. Of course, they're graded as well, but the only rubric is time spent. On that score, I aced it every time. The game is gorgeous, the style is based on traditional brush paintings, and the game looks like you are in control of a character in a painting. It's simply beautiful. Cutscenes are done with still images, which are then moved to create animation in addition to smoke effects and voice acting to flesh them out. It works, but I found myself less invested in them than I had been in the main series. The game uses color to indicate how to use things on the screen, red for climbing, green for hiding, or disposing of bodies. The use of sequences and the Animus database leads me to believe we are playing from the future using Abstergo technology. However, unlike other Assassin's Creed games, there is no meta story, no layers, 
I know that the game has received criticism for including an overstory that often feels less real, less interesting than the Animus, but I've always enjoyed piecing the real world together from these little sequences, and I definitely noticed their absence in Chronicles China. The game's AI has simple rules that are explained via fairly robust tutorials in-game. If you follow their rules, the AI is simple to beat. I spent a lot of the latter part of the game just killing everyone because I was tired of trying to be sneaky, however. Now a lot of my longtime viewers are probably wondering why I haven't talked about the story yet. There's a good reason for that. I didn't feel invested at all in the story. I know there is one there. I know that Xiao Jun was mentored by Ezio Auditori from Assassin's Creed 2. I know that she's chasing down a piece of Eden that Ezio gave her. But the game basically failed to captivate me on that front. Thankfully the game was short. Very short. So, to tie this off, I will say the stealth gameplay is excellent and fans of the stealth genre will find themselves restarting over and over to achieve that perfect stealthy playthrough. Fans of Assassin's Creed will find a lot to like here, but I would temper your expectations as it is a different format and while there are a lot of creedy things here, a lot of it is hidden behind side-scrolling mechanics. Overall, I would give this game a solid... And on that note, I'm just letting you know I've decided to start giving letter grades to the games I review. So it's, you know, A plus, A minus, all that kind of stuff, and this one gets a B. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment below. If there's a game that you want me to do a full review of, let me know in, let me know in the comments. I will do them. I love requests. Okay, so thanks for watching. Class dismissed.